Hello from Snapdragon Summit, and we're here for the second installment or of our uh, Snapdragon on Innovating Society. I'm here with Michelle Gant, who is Senior Director of Product Marketing for Automotive at Qualcomm. Thank you for finding the time in this beautiful <laughs> weather and back-to-back -back meetings. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> we have been talking about, obviously, both AI in the car, autom uh, automotive as an industry has been pretty slow at change. They're, they're renowned for changing slowly, but it feels like both from an EV perspective and then from a, a, a self-driving car perspective, NAI at the edge, the past couple of years have really accelerated change. And it seems like the manufacturers have put, no pun intended, the foot on the gas. Am I right? Yes, I would say to you're completely right. Um, I think the having the electrification followed by software, um, the, the ability to do software defined vehicles, it allows them to bring features to the industry faster. They do development in the cloud. There's lots of things that they're able to do now that can speed the process up. And also I think it's consumer demand, right? They want to bring their digital lives on the go. So they are pushing and demanding that that it makes it easy to go from your house with your phone to just jump right into your car or be productive on the go, um, you know, be able to be entertained on the go. They want to do all of those things wherever they are. And so the car is sort of that next frontier. So I would say consumer demand is driving that. And then there's also just, because there's so much opportunity with this electrification and software defined vehicle, um, there's lots of competition now. So everybody's getting in the game, right? You have people who would not normally be in automotive. You have SaaS providers, service providers. You have um, all sorts of other ecosystem partners that are, they see this great opportunity for this transformation. And so, um, you know, it's just the right time to jump in. So with all of that activity, it's just really, I think, driving the industry forward and at a faster pace than it's used to. Well, I'm certainly benefiting from it. I'm a proud owner of a Rivian. Oh, great. <laughs> and uh, my little EV, as I called her. <laughs> See what an EV. <laughs> um, it really, to me, brings to fruition from an experience perspective, the idea of edge and cloud working together to drive an experience that is personal, is contextual. And I think when it comes to AI, maybe the car is the best example because mm. I want both, right? I right. want the cloud, but I want the immediacy of decision being made in the car. We're getting close to the holidays. <laughs> You're a Thanksgiving dinner. How do you explain the value of that hybrid AI? I'm glad you're asking me this question because then I can prepare because my <laughs> um, family's always like, what do you do exactly? So um, actually, so the way I like to explain it is the car is just this great big sensor that's driving down the road, gathering all sorts of data. So not only um, around in its environment as it's going down the road, but also inside with its occupants. So it is constantly getting that data, assessing it, um, and then deciding, you know, what do I need to do based on the activities that it's that it's sensing? Is it something that they need to do while it's driving on the road, or something that the, the occupants are doing and are wanting to do, or trying to uh, a task they're trying to do? So it's really great because, um, as we talked about in the in the program this morning, uh, this this idea of an AI orchestrator um, being able to understand. And also with a car, you have to make real-time decisions, right? Absolutely. It's not like a phone. It's uh, more time critical. Yeah. So having uh, the AI orchestrator be able to know, is it okay to go to the cloud for this um, activity? Yeah. You know, is it making a reservation? Is it a service, you know, wanting to um, stream a piece of music? Or is it, I need to make a decision Whether based on what's happening on the road. Yeah. Exactly. So having that AI orchestrator know, oh, I can go on device to get that data. It's, it's local or I can, this is okay, I can go to the cloud for this one. So that is how I sort of, uh, you know, explain it to people who are not doing this every day. I, I think that passes the Thanksgiving <laughs> dinner yeah, moment. Good. So from an industry perspective, sometimes I get a little bit frustrated because in tech, we always really look at 10, five years down the road, big shiny thing, the big change. But when I think about AI in the car today, there's a lot from a safety 
perspective that we can deliver and also we can elevate the experience of both drivers and passengers and yet maybe it's not as exciting but it is making a difference mm -hmm. to people today right correct yes and so we um so part of our snapdragon digital chassis we have a it's called the Snapdragon Car to Cloud. It's our connected services platform. And so that is also driving some rich experiences, um, being able to bring those services to the um, occupants and drivers' fingertips, like being able to pay for something really easily. Make a, you know, when it's combined with AI, not noticing that there's something wrong um, on the car, there's like a, this pesky, you know, light on the dash that's like giving you an error and you don't know what it is, right? You can just ask it ask. and it'll tell you what's wrong and then it will reach out and make that appointment for you. I mean, I'm sure you're very busy just like me and to be able to have like a I digital assistant. I also don't assistant. understand cars. <laughs> oh, right, and exactly. And so it's like, can you just make that appointment for me and you know, get it taken care of and then I don't have to worry. So those are the kinds of things that I think are bringing that convenience um, and then, you know, helping with comfort type things. So I feel like that's um, some of the things that we're really driving towards with our connected services, being able to make payments, um, you know, insurance quotes, all sorts of things. We're working with this broad ecosystem. I mean, that's one of the, the great things that I think we have is this really broad global ecosystem of all these different types of partners that really can bring um, these different types of experiences, um, you know, services to the car that, you know, were not there, you know, a couple years ago. Yeah. And then you can't even imagine it's infinite, you know, what could be there in the future. So really excited about that. So you mentioned the word ecosystem, and if there's one thing that Qualcomm has done for years in all the industry that you've entered, is really building an ecosystem around the technology that you're deploying. And when I think about, especially self-driving cars, and, and you know, we had an announcement recently about um, taxis and, and all that is to come, the technology is going to be ready before society is going to be ready, both from you know, anything from insurance to new rules on the road to a whole bunch of different things. What role do you want to play in that? So I think um, what we're doing, and, and to your point about the ecosystem, none of us can do this alone, right? Absolutely. So our partners, our customers, we're all driving towards this, bringing that technology. I think it's it's then having to evangelize that outside of the tech world, right? And so to help um, city managers, people that, that may not understand or what's needed, um, you know, be part of those conversations to really help drive that awareness um, consumer awareness also, so yeah. that because a lot of times consumers fear these things, right? The whole um, autonomous driving and things like that, or privacy. So, um, you know, we really want to be part of that um, messaging and collaboration with those key partners to really get that, um, that story out there that, um, you know, there's this great tech technology behind these things, but it's um, it's really can make your lives easier and more convenient and, and safer. And so that's what I think um, partnering with our, um, you know, really astounding <laughs> ecosystem is, is really helpful for that. Thank you very much for the time today. I am excited. I think that there's a lot of positive that is going to come from AI in cars from a safety perspective from maybe you know lowering the stress level that we have whenever we <laughs> commute. I live in Atlanta, so traffic is bad. Um, but I'm excited and I really, really appreciate the time today. Well, thank you so much, it was great talking to thank you. Thank you. <laughs>